Hey there viewers, Eric O here, Self Main Auto. Welcome back to another repair video. We've got this 04 Trailblazer that got dropped off to us. The guy said it kept killing his battery, but he knew why. He said the blower motor wouldn't shut off, so he was wise enough to yank the fuse out of it and he drove it for a couple days so I could get him in. He's got it here now, so we're going to take a look and see why this blower motor won't shut off. Well, there's his fuse. He said he left it in the cup holder. I went ahead and printed this out a wiring diagram so we know what the heck we're looking at. We know where this fuse goes. I see we got a uh, fuse number 35. It's a 40 amp fuse there. So that's, uh, that's what we got here. It's a 40 amp fuse that he left in his cup holder there for us. So it goes in the underhood fuse box. We'll find that. Verify the complaint. This one has uh, automatic AC. Uh, so we have this blower motor control module and then the blower motor. Uh, so the potential possibility here is it's pretty pretty small possibility of what's going on really but I highly suspect this blower motor control module is um, is the fault so what that has it has a power going in and the ground going in and then the power ground going out to the motor and then it has this purple and white wire here now it comes from the HVAC control module and I believe that is a, is a ground switched signal like a duty signal going into this blower uh, motor control module to uh, you know provide it with a, a variable speed so we'll test that out we're just we're just going to go right to uh, right to this well first we'll put the fuse in like I say verify the complaint blower motors on you know as long as this HVAC module appears to be you know turning off we're going to go right for the uh, right for the meat and the potatoes here no sense of leaving that in we figured out he's telling the truth which I mean I wasn't suspicious that he wasn't but we know where the fuse goes verified the complaint let's go on the inside it might get kind of tricky to record here because everything we need is up under here I grabbed a seven millimeter I'm gonna pull this little hush panel off see what we find few connectors here I got unhooked. Let me grab uh, it's got some push nails and stuff. Let me grab a little pair of pliers. There's two. There's three. Oh, this is for the XM radio. familiar with that connector and I think for the purpose of what we have to do we'll just leave it right there see if I can see what we're after anyways and we can all right I think that's it anyhow all right let me uh I'll get the camera I can see the blower module or I guess what we would commonly refer to as a blower motor resistor Right up under there. I ended up taking that panel out. I, I just, uh, it was this antenna connector that was kind of a stinker. It's just, it's just a regular push tab that's on. I just wasn't pushing it hard enough. So I got that XM module out of the way. So anyhow, the part we're after is this little guy right here. That's our blower control module or blower resistor, whatever you want to refer to it as. Uh, the purple and the black wire, those are the two going to the motor. Oh, let's see, I can't even see the video here. Um, well, hopefully you can see it. The uh, red and black wire on the module, those are the uh, power and ground inputs. And then that center wire, I believe it's purple with a white tracer. Uh, that's going to be our ground switching uh, duty cycle to uh, control this module. Now that we've got all that established, just for the, the purpose of testing, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense to do any tests. Uh, on the power in the ground because obviously that works because the blower motor works so we only 
technically, I think, if I'm thinking about it right, the only thing we have to check is the signal wire coming from the HVAC controller and uh, you know make sure we got a good signal. If we got a good signal in, then, then that's it. It's one, two, barbecue. I got it unplugged. So you can see what that is. And like I say, we're gonna take and stick a, I'm gonna grab a meter and uh, we're just gonna look for a varying voltage. We're gonna hook uh, from the power with our red lead on our meter and then our black lead will go to the uh, signal wire there and see what we got coming into this thing. So let me grab a meter, let me put the fuse back in it. Now that's unplugged, turn the key on and do some testing. Well, fuse is on it, key's on, I grabbed a meter. This is going to be very similar to the fan speed controller. I don't know if you guys have seen all the videos, but I did one on a uh, Mazda for the actual engine cooling fan. And this is uh, very, very similar. So let's see, we'll get our meter set up here. Just do it on a graph. And this meter doesn't capture very quickly, it's very old, but uh, I'll be able to. Hopefully see it on the graph. I'll move the camera and stuff around here as soon as we as soon as I get things set up. Okay, I think you can see that there. Let me make sure the fan speed. Okay, I've got the fan speed all the way on low. So we're just gonna take our our ground. Like I say, we're gonna go in the center terminal. Whoops, <laughs> let me get the right connector here. Where is it? There we go. Try to look at the camera and do something, talk and so we'll stick that one in the center. So that's our signal wire. And then we're going to take our positive. And we're going to go into the positive. So I can just hit that one from the back side. Keep them from touching. Okay, so on our lowest setting, actually, you know what? Let's test it in the off position first. Okay, so that's turned off. And I mean, this is. This pretty much tells us right here that our blower resistor is bad. So in the off position we have zero volts, which we would expect. And then I'm gonna expect a um, you know a higher higher voltage as uh, as speed increases. So so that's speed one right there. We can see we're putting out about uh, you know 5.8 volts on an average. Six point well, 7.5 on the next speed. Studying out about 8.3 you know, 8 on that speed. 9 volts on that speed. Next one up. You can see our, our duty cycle there is, is decreasing the amount of the on off time. Um, let's see. Then we'll go up one more speed. And then we can see on high we're at 11.5 volts, um, you know, average. So you don't have to have a graphing meter to look at this. Can you guys see it? Um, we certainly could just look at it in a conventional uh, conventional meter, you know, if that's all you have. So I'll just toggle down through the voltage because that'll give you your average displayed volts. You know, and each time I toggle it down, you'll watch it. You'll watch it drop. So. Yeah, and then simply turn it off. Uh, oops, let me hit the off button, there we go. Turn it off and it theoretically should go to zero. So I think that's some pretty definitive results. Uh, let me see if I can round us up a blower module and we'll get this swapped out. All right, well, I just got off the phone with Napa. They do uh, they do have one, surprisingly. Vance Auto didn't have one, but uh, Napa had one. And they're gonna send it up and uh, I'll see what kind of tools we're gonna need to change this. We'll get changed out and just verify that it works. All right, well, Napa showed up with a new one. I just took and uh, popped the old one out. Pretty simple. I mean, there's no sense in showing it. Just got two screws that hold it in. You've probably seen that earlier. And then the wire that goes to the uh, blower motor. So I'll just grab the new one. And... Uh, well, <laughs> so, yeah, so here's, here's the new one in case you're looking to get one. Made in the USA, you really don't see that very often. But this unit may differ in appearance from the original unit, however, it will fit and function, will be equivalent. 
and it is different. There's no uh, wire hanging off it for our blower motor, but I see we've got another little baggie here full of goodies. It's got a little bigger heat sink on it, so maybe that's the issue with them. I don't know. This thing's an 04. It's, uh, I don't know if this is what brand this one is. It's a Carter, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know if this is factory or not. Looks looks pretty factory, kind of kind of old and grungy looking, like me. Let's see, we got some wires here. Must be we gotta do a little cut and splice. Probably to read the directions, or you think we should just go for it? So it looks like we've got uh, our, I think the same as our blower motor. Yep, so our blower motor, so it looks like we're going to end up cutting and splicing our our other wires here. I always grab that plug, I always grab the wrong plug. So we're going to end up cutting and splicing uh, the power ground and signal wire. And that comes with a little foam pad here. And that appears that it's going to go over the outside like so. I may be totally wrong, I'm just making this stuff up. Yeah, this one's got a little foam pad on it, so I gotta believe that to be true. Let's come with directions. Let's read them. Wait a minute, let's see. Where's number one? Detached connector that goes to blower motor. Check. Let's, let's see. Come in. Uh, take off original LPM from HVAC module. Cut three cables near. What the, what the heck's an LPM? LPM, two LPM. LPM original. All, right. All this terminology. Assemble the new LPM using screws, appropriate holes with numbers 300, 800, depending upon applicable program. What? Oh, okay, I see. It's got the multiple hole unit and they have numbers on it, so depending on you know their orientation to this one you know what I think we can figure this out Jeez. why can't they just give us the one that's just like the old one that lasted a long time 10 11 years I should have bought a Delco okay so we'll stick that on there like so I'm gonna take and put this up in where it belongs Using the appropriate holes, either holes number 300 or 500. This thing's kind of got some glue all over it or something. And uh, as soon as I get that buttoned up, I'm going to run the wires back around the blower motor, get them plugged in, and then we'll uh, splice these together. We'll be in good shape. I hate, absolutely hate aftermarket stuff. It's all excited, like made in the USA. Freaking junk. It's all junk. How do. I'm gonna get started because anytime like I'll call like Eklund and say hey Eklund I'm trying to put this in the wires don't reach well guess what I'm the only one in the whole world that's ever had this problem it's like every single day we get aftermarket stuff that is absolute crap let me show you the wires you put the blower module in it only goes in one way I mean you put it in there's only a certain amount of holes that line up you put it in and the wires are like an inch too short from reaching the blower motor. It's just frustrating because now, you know, I checked with GM. They don't have one. We got it tore apart. It's Friday. It's 3 o'clock. He wants it done by 5. I still got service this. I got a Ford over there that won't start. I got another Ford outside. They got towed in. Got two of them towed in. One's a no start, no crank. The other one's a no start, no crank. Got a Saturn out there, we're on a drive cycle. I've got all kinds of crap to look at, and then now we got some stupid thing like this. So I think what we're gonna have to do, I'll show you so you don't don't waste your money buying a crap nap apart. We're just gonna end up uh, I know it's gonna sound foolish. I mean we gotta cut wires anyways to splice them in, but we're just gonna cut the plug off this. We got a long enough plug. That's frustrating. See if I can show you what's going on here. Sorry to whine about it, but there's the blower module. The, you know, that's all in. Like I say, that's that's not rocket science putting it in. There's, 
And then the wires go over here to the blower motor. Well, typically these wires are actually supposed to run around this side of the blower motor because there's a hook up there that the wires hook into. But once you do that, so right now they're, let me see, I'll just kind of stick it up there. Right now it's on that hook. So technically we're supposed to be able to bring this over and plug it in. But I think we're a few french fries short of a Happy Meal here. Why has this always happened to me? So my first initial thought was, is well, I probably ought to read the directions, but <laughs> I did go back through and read them, and, and we did it right. You can't put it in the other way because um, if you're looking at it wondering, you know, if I could just flip it around, because technically if we could flip it around, move the connector an inch closer, everything would be happy, but it hits the blower case, so not an option. I tell you, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a circus around here all the time. I could probably do twice as much work in one day if I didn't have to deal with this crap. Of course, I'm like, wow, I'm busy, but let's just shoot a shoot a quick video. This will be real quick, be quick and fun. Now I just want to shoot somebody. Yeah, not, not really, but you know what I'm saying. If you guys work in this field, you know how frustrating it is to run into crap like this. So. Note to self, never buy a Napa blower module again for a trailblazer. So we'll cut this one off. I don't know. What the heck, Napa? Alright, so there's our blower connector, our blower motor connector. Uh, well now we gotta figure out which one's power and ground on this little guy because we don't want the motor spinning backwards and sucking up all the dirt. So we'll hook up these ones first. Yays. They don't need to be that long. We'll chop these off. I don't watch, they'll be too short now. I don't think so. I don't think so. Double check. Yeah, we're good. Probably should have double checked before I cut them. That's okay. That's alright, it keeps the channel more like real reality TV. But, you know, I see some mechanics, they get, uh, they get all pumped up over this stuff. And, you know, they want to call down to Napa store and kill the guy at the counter. But, you know what, he's not the dude that made this. So, I've never really found a sense in flipping out on the parts counter guy because it never really solves any problems and like I say he's not the he's not, he didn't make this thing you know it's some guy that's making six digits a year sitting behind a desk he's the one that made it or designed it making the big box those dirt bags like us out here trying to put this stuff together like I say, I, I used to call, I used to call all the time, like, you know, you get crappy parts, I'd be like, oh, well, maybe I'll call their research and development team and let them know that this doesn't fit, but they don't care. They don't care one iota of a bit. They have a, uh, oops, they have a certain amount of failure that's acceptable, which just, that just blows my mind in and of itself, that there is an acceptable rate of failure. When you want that to be zero, or near zero, but I don't know, they don't care. So, yeah, I've called them like, you know, all different kinds of manufacturers. You get a problem with something, like, well, I'll just, I'll just call them. You know, I've called, you know, I'll call Walker, like, hey, this pipe is, you know, you could do this like a little bit different and it would be perfect. And they're like, yeah, okay, thanks for calling. You know, it's like some 85 year old man who's smoked Paul Malls his whole life, always seems to be the guy that answers the phone. So, I've given up on them. I quit calling. Quit trying to better the system, I guess, if you will. Same thing with Advance Auto. Their their B two B or their oh, what do they call it? It's our our parts ordering software that we have. You know that has all kinds of issues. And I used to call them and be like, oh, here's a problem. And they'd go on, they'd log it in, and you'd hear them. They're just typing away. You know, they got like seven or eight people working there that are, you know, they just 
take all this in, their IT department or whatever they call it. You check back on that problem like two years later, still a problem, still broke. So it's like, what's, what's the point? Why don't you just go in there and just fire everybody and keep the one guy that's writing the software and because nothing changes. So I think we just create jobs that are just unnecessary. Okay. How's that for a lot of whining? Yeah, I get these shrunk down. And we'll plug it in and see which one's positive and which one's negative. Then I crimped them on, as you saw, and got them all shrunk down. And I got thinking, like, you big dummy, you don't have to figure out what's positive and what's negative because you just got to go off plug orientation. So, in this case, we would have been fine just going color for color, you know, purple. Got so wound up because the thing was wrong that I overlooked it. But let's look at the fact now that we've got a little blower motor test connector. Yeah, we'd never find it if we needed it anyways. Right. I'm past it. Get a couple of these. down there. You guys like using these uh, crimp and seal heat shrink things or butt connectors or are you more of a solder and heat shrink and that kind of stuff? I guess it doesn't matter to me. I, I've got a lot of heat shrink and I do solder and heat shrink and but I figured uh, this was just as easy. It's on the interior. I'm not, not too worried about it. It'll be fine. It'll be just fine. My dad, you know, he goes nuts on these crimp connectors. He hates crimp connectors. I mean, they're, yeah, I mean, you seal them up. You seal them up and the goo comes out. I mean, they're, they're bulletproof. I like them. I've never had an issue with them. He hates them. He's a solder, solder and heat shrink and tape kind of guy. The only thing I will say about these is like when you're crimping them, if you don't use the right part of your crimper, you know, if you use the part that's that's pointed, you know, for the uh, non-insulated connectors, I guess it would be for, and it pokes a little hole in it. When you go to heat shrink them, they split open, so be aware of that if you buy these. Plus, they're kind of expensive, but I think they're, they make it kind of quick. That's why I like them, especially when you're dealing with stuff like this. And, taken like way longer than it should have we should be sitting back eating some jam and drinking some coffee by now but I ain't gonna make you watch me heat shrink this whole thing I'll kick the camera back on here in a second when we get it all taped up and ready to roll waiting for that to cool I think I figured this out they knew this because look, see this little thing here? That's that little foam pad. It was the center of that notch out that goes around the blower motor resistor. I know. I think they know because look. It's not in the instructions, but I know it's there. You unhook the adhesive, stick that on the wall, and you beat your head against it. <laughs> That's pretty good thinking. That reminds me of a story. Got a lot of those. So the other day, like two days ago, I was putting a filler neck in a 2000 Dodge Stratus. One that I just posted. I probably, I haven't posted it yet, but it'll probably be up before this video. Putting wheel bearings in, I had to do a filler neck on. Long story short, put the filler neck in, go to put the gas cap on. Won't fit. Like so. so it was a Spectra filler neck. So I call Spectra, say, blah, blah, blah. Gas cap doesn't fit. Fits the old one fine. Ordered a new cap, doesn't fit. Go through the whole circus. And I got this guy, his name's Patrick. He goes, well, uh, and he draws that uh, out for a long time. Uh, it is about uh, 
Oh, it's 4.30 here, so uh, I'll probably call you back tomorrow. That's so stupid I can't make it up. That's word for word. That's what he says. I'm like, okay. Click. <laughs> really? I mean, these are the people that are working at these places. He'll probably, I'm still waiting for Patrick to call back, but. We'll get this thing plugged in. What a long video of me whining. Let's see here. Plug that into there. Get this wrapped around, plug the blower motor in. We've got lots of cable now, boy. Get this thing plugged in. Can't see a darn thing. There we go. Get her hooked back up. Okay. Let's turn the key on, see if it makes smoke. No smoke. I don't think she's taking off. Let's turn her down on low here. Fixed. Let's go all the way on low. Next one up. Hang on, folks, we're going to hit high. Beautiful. So, there it is. I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's our blower module and of course our wires and everything will stick back up here and then uh, the wires that run around to our oops, I don't know if you guys can see it but there's our blower motor they run up and like I said they've got a little hook up in there so I mean really no big deal it's a good fix I mean it works there's nothing wrong with the with the work we did but other than the fact it's just aggravating so Slide this back under. I don't know where these went now. This really don't matter. Yeah, we've got one more, I think, with nothing on it. Yep. There we go. Everything's clicked back together. What do we got there? Back up. We'll put a. Put our screws back in it. The words of my dad, you're gonna have to get past it. That's what he'd always tell me. You're gonna, you're gonna have to get past it. You have to get past it, Obraka. <laughs> he still tells me that. So, let's get past it. What sounded like a little baby. Then we'll go over. Probably gonna be making a lot of videos today. I mean, it's almost. What time is it, man? It's getting late. Like I said, we got a Ford over there with a no start, no crank. That one ought to be pretty cool. No communications, I guess. That got towed in from another shop. And then uh, got a little, uh, I don't know what's out there, a little Ford. I call it Escort, but it's a Focus. That one is towed in from another shop, too. They put a trainee in it. And now it doesn't start. They started and drove it in, but now it doesn't start. And they think that the guy that put the trainee in it might have hooked the battery up backwards. So... If that's the case, that should be a real gem to figure out. We'll see. Keep your eyes peeled. And I guess with that being said, viewers, I think we ought to just keep moving forward and get some of this uh, work out of here and see what we can get accomplished today and probably end up coming into work tomorrow a little bit on the weekend, but that's okay. One of the joys of being a business owner and the only employee. <laughs> But uh, thanks for watching. Hope you liked this video. Hope you learned a little something from it. Well, at least learned which parts to buy and which ones not to buy. So if you do like this video, give us a thumbs up. Check us out on Facebook if you want to connect with us socially. And uh, don't forget to like us there. Leave any questions, comments, concerns, or criticisms you have down in the comment box below. We always like to read those and interact with you, Ken. And try to get back to you as soon as I can. We're over 3,000 subscribers now. And keep climbing that ladder each day so it gets a, a little more difficult to respond to everybody in a timely manner but I do do my best to respond so 
Thanks for watching and remember viewers, if I can do it, you can do it.